Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting um, a woodland or forest scene, a loose watercolour painting inspired by this beautiful photograph that I found on Pixabay. I shall leave the link to this reference photograph in the description below. Um, I'm not going to copy it slavishly. I'm going to do my own interpretation inspired by the, the, the basic um, elements in this beautiful photograph. And as you can see here, I've used my artistic license to interpret this painting in my own way. I'm starting off by simplifying the photograph um, into its sort of simplest form, really. I'm going to just draw in my, um, the simplest shapes of, and positions of my very plain tree trunks and that will give me a sort of a, some guidelines when I come to paint. I'm using a carpenter's pencil here. It's got a nice wide lead um, and it's really nice for loose sketching because it stops you from sort of fiddling around with too much detail. It's like if you want to paint loose, uh, one of the best things to do is to use the largest brushes that you possibly can in order to achieve the effects that you want because using large brushes for loose watercolour painting also stops you from fiddling and keeps you nice and loose and keeps your mark making very expressive. So I'm picking a few of the trees from the photograph, um, a big main tree across the foreground towards the right and a couple of um, uh, fairly strong looking trees in the midground and then smaller trees in the background and I'm going to paint wet in wet and build up layers so my first layer is going to be uh, using indigo um, so I've wet my page all over with my large pro art uh, Ron Ranson Harkey brush and here comes the indigo being swept across the page in horizontal bands um, and as my board is at an angle of 45 degrees and the paint is beginning to diffuse and flow downwards because of gravity um, I think you can see that quite clearly here and this is giving me this soft fairly flat but slightly graduated wash with a little bit of difference in tonal value here and there but it's a nice light wash which is a going to be a really good basis for my distant trees. I'm just going to put a bit of colour, extra colour, into my larger foreground tree while everything's still wet so I've uh, mixed up a slightly richer mixture of indigo and dabbed my brush onto um, a piece of paper towel to remove any excess water so I don't get cauliflowers or runbacks. I'm just running some darker paint through that tree so that I've got it positioned. Now I'm doing the same with my mid-ground trees and while these might look a little bit harsh they will soften back and diffuse into the wet background wash. So to reiterate, this is a slightly richer, drier mixture of indigo um, because if you were to use a, a, a wetter mixture than the background wash, uh, you could end up getting cauliflowers and runbacks. So you can see now I've got some quite nice marks beginning to diffuse out and beginning to look a bit like um, distant trees and as the paint runs down I'll use my clean damp brush just to mop up that bead along the snow line again if I need to. This is just some clean water that I flicked onto it and this is to cause deliberately cause these little blooms and blossoms and as they spread out and soften and diffuse they'll just give my background a little bit of extra texture and variety. So now I've laid my board flat because I don't want those blooms and blossoms to run down the page. 
with my small calligraphy brush. This is burnt umber and I'm adding to my wet background wash which is slowly drying all the time of course but it's still damp enough to work in. There's still a sheen on the page um, so I'm adding these brown tree trunks to the blue ones. Everything's beginning to soften and continuing to soften and this way even though it looks a little bit odd at the moment I'm creating um, my distant forest, my distant trees and once it's dry and I paint on my stronger trees it should look quite effective and give me that sense of depth and distance and aerial perspective. This is my plastic card and I'm just going to etch through some paler marks into the background and that gives me variety of tone and texture and in, will enhance the look of my uh, lovely loose distant tree line. And I shall continue to add some slightly darker paint, richer, drier paint to my mid-ground trees and my main tree um, and a little bit of shadow underneath the trunks of the trees and then allow my painting to dry completely and once it's completely dry I can come back and paint a bit more detail onto the page um, using the wet paint on dry paper. So this is the wet on dry method and I've mixed up a mixture of my uh, burnt umber with a little bit of indigo in it um, and I'm painting in some slightly stronger trees this time. As I said, uh, wet paint on the dry painting, so I can take my time doing this. I'm sorry that my hand's in the way here. Um, it's the only way that I can have my camera set up at the moment, but you can see there um, that these stronger, still quite fine marks, but these are the way that I've got my hard edged marks work really well painted on top of the softly diffused background where I've got my soft diffused marks where it was painted in wet in wet. So I'm beginning to build up the layers of the painting. We're starting to get a bit more depth and distance. This is um, a small to medium calligraphy brush, just a cheap brush that I found on eBay. It's just generic calligraphy brush, no particular brand. Any sort of small to medium brush, probably a round brush with a good point, will do exactly the same job, or a sort of medium sized rigger brush will do the same job too. So you can see I'm adding darker, richer paint to some of these tree chunks. And this is beginning to add even more depth and distance as the more detail and dark that I add, the further forward these trees become. Um, I can then use a tissue to kind of sort of dab back onto the trunks here and there, and that will give me some texture and some variety. And just push the trees back if they're coming forward a little bit too much. So as I work across the painting, I'm sort of doing exactly the same kind of thing, working to and fro here and there, and then sort of beginning to put in some shadows underneath the tree trunks and beginning to sort of get the lie of the land. And this helps to establish um, the light direction in my painting. The light is coming sort of top right so that my shadows are coming from the base of the trees and going towards the bottom left. Just gently sloping which gives us a little bit of undulation to the ground.
There is a more in-depth tutorial for this painting on Patreon, um, complete with downloadable reference photographs, etc. Um, so if that interests you, please follow the links below. So I'm beginning to see the right amount of depth now in my um, mid-ground trees and my distant trees that were painted wet in wet. So now I'm going to focus a bit more on my main uh, foreground tree, which is just this tree trunk here right in the front. Now this is tube consistency indigo with some burnt umber added to make a lovely dark sort of blue bluish blackish brown um, and I'm just dabbing it over my trunk seemingly at random but I'm trying to get some variety to the textures leaving a little bit of that underpainting showing through and eventually I'm hoping that I'll get some nice sort of bark textures appearing there but without having to paint in too much detail i'm trying to suggest the detail here i'm keeping my tones nice and dark my paint is almost tube consistency and i think you can see how this tree is beginning to really pop out to really stand out the extra definition with which i'm painting this larger tree is keeping it firmly in the front of the painting and what that does is it pushes everything else back now i can also dab out paint here like i did just for a bit of extra texture with a tissue or a paper towel and um, that paint will still soften and diffuse but i will get these slightly different tonal values which again gives me that sort of impression or suggestion of bark and shadows. So this really is the last phase of this painting um, to use the dark paint, the richer paint, to really bring out the details but still trying to keep things as loose as possible. So this tree on the left in the mid-ground, I'm giving a much more detailed treatment than any of the other trees, apart from the main large foreground tree, uh, because these two trees, I would like to actually be the main focus of the painting that then leads the eye around the rest of the painting. So I'm continuing to build up the darks on this tree and the details of the branches but also um, still using that paper towel to knock back and lift a little bit of paint just to lighten it up and to keep that variety of texture and tone. Now one of the final things here is to take the plastic card and to etch through some branches into this or from this very thick paint. So I'm pulling the paint out from the thick dark areas with the card and creating extra branches. Some of them will be lighter so it looks as if they're coming from sort of the middle of the trunks and things like that and this in itself is adding um, extra form and dimensionality to a sort of 3D look to my painting hopefully. And then with my medium Pro Art Harky brush and a mixture of the two colours, pulling out those shadows across the snow, tending slightly downwards, again indicating that the trees are growing on a slight slope and that the light is coming in from sort of top right. So I think I'm just about done, but to check, I will remove the masking tape border and that will give me that nice clean white edging and that allows me to sort of see the painting with fresh eyes and I can see if I need to do any more to it. 
if there's anything that looks a bit unbalanced or just anything extra that I need to add. I'm looking at it now and I quite like it, but I think I need um, to build up the top branches of this mid-ground tree, sort of top left. So I'm adding just a few more branches in, not too many, and being careful to stop at the white border. Um, and just bringing in a little bit more um, of a tangle of branches there. And I think that brings a bit more balance to the painting. And I'm quite happy with that. Um, and I hope you found that helpful, seeing how to sort of start off with a, a very um, sort of fuzzy, blurry, wet in wet background painting to produce the distant trees and to get some aerial perspective into the painting and then to gradually bring forward working um, wet on dry to bring some more definition to the mid-ground trees and then using stronger and darker paint coming further forward um, to add in those focal point mid and foreground trees. So thank you very much for watching and supporting the channel here on YouTube. Very much appreciated um, and I hope it was helpful for you. Uh, please um, give us a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already as it really helps with my reach. And thank you to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.